if, elif, else, if, if, else. You got it? <laughs> okay, let's get started. Welcome to episode five in my Python Right Now series, where I'm gonna teach you everything you pretty much need to know to become dangerous in Python. Now, if you don't know what I was talking about in the intro print, that's okay, but go back and watch the previous episode. Else, let's continue. Because in this episode, we're gonna build on our flow control or <laughs> controlling the flow of our Python programming. If something is true, then do something. And in the previous episode, you helped me prevent Evil Ben from entering our coffee shop. We said, if Evil Ben comes in, kick him out. Else, hey, you're good to go, continue. But now we gotta build on that because I figured out, not all bins are evil. Who would have thought? So there are some good bins out there, so we now have to put into our Python programming a way to flesh out the evil bins and let the good ones in. But to do that, we have to introduce some new concepts of how we control the flow in our Python programming. Whew, this one's gonna be fun, so get ready. Get your coffee set up, because that's pretty much all you need in this, because I'm providing a free Python lab right here in your browser. Check it out, link below, get signed up, because the best way to learn Python is to actually just do it, to lab it up. And you're gonna do that right now here with me. Oh, and by the way, this entire series is free, thanks to our sponsor, IT Pro TV. Now, if you don't know what IT Pro TV is, print, you're crazy, because they are the best IT training platform out there. They are what I use to keep my skills up to date. And that's why I love them, because they have things for people at every level in their IT journey. So for me, I've been doing things for a while, so they have perfect things to help me upskill myself. I don't know why I said that weird. And also, if you're just like getting started, starting at zero, they have everything for you, from getting started with your A plus certification, to network plus, to jumping up to your CCNA, and then maybe becoming a hacker, and they have hacking courses, they got it all. And not only that, you're not just gonna be sitting there watching a video, they have labs. The things they teach you, you can implement it immediately start playing with it right away so if you love IT and you want to learn like me did not mean that to rhyme <laughs> check it out link below and if you use code network Chuck you get 30% off forever so check them out okay quick coffee break before we get started gotta fill up just a little bit ah, networkchuck.coffee now first let's go ahead and get our Python lab environment fired up so again check that link in the description sign up for my free course and launch that first lab for episode 5 last episode we did a great job keeping evil Ben out of the coffee shop we said yo bro What's your name? And if he said Ben, dude, we printed, you're not welcome here, kick him out and exit. Let's test it out real quick. Let's go ahead and run this code. Click on run right here at the top. Run. What's your name? Let's just say we're Ben today. We're Ben, feeling kind of evil. Whoa, immediate kick out. Now, I have to apologize to you, Ben, because not all Bens are evil. And we have to reflect that in our script. Right now, we gotta figure out, hey, is Ben evil? And what's the best way to find out if a Ben is evil? It's simple, right? You just you just ask him. So let's ask Ben. <laughs> An evil person will be honest. So here's our first task. If their name is Ben, we need to ask them, hey, are you evil? If they answer yes, kick him out. If they answer no, well then duh, they're not evil. <laughs> and they can continue on. Now, real quick, before I show you how to do this, and this will be a new concept, I wanna have you try it. This will help you kind of understand the logic of what we're about to do. So pause and try to do this. Unpause. Let me walk you through it real quick. So the first task in this task is we have to ask Ben, are you evil? But we only need to ask Ben. Like if we put the question up here and like Brittany comes in, we're like, what's your name? Brittany, are you evil, Brittany? That wouldn't make any sense because only Ben's are evil. So we have to accommodate for that logic. So we need to ask only Ben's if they're evil. So the question's gonna have to go over here in our if statement. So that's where I'll put it. I'll put it right on top of this first print statement. So I'll get in there. I'll put my cursor at the end of the if statement, hit enter, and I'll create a new variable. I'll say evil underscore status. And I'll have that equal, and this will be an input function because I'm gonna be asking Ben a question. Input, and then I'll say the string, are you evil? Question mark, and then I'll do a backslash n to have a nice little space. So cool, we're now finding out if Ben is evil, and this evil status will either answer or equal to yes or no. And we have to do something with that information. If it's yes, we have to kick him out. If it's no, we have to let him come in. It sounds like we might need another if statement, right? And if you thought that, you're exactly right. New concept time. We're talking about something called nested ifs. We're gonna build a nest of ifs here. And check it out, here's what we'll do. We'll go and just do this right now. So just after our evil status equals are you evil, I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna create another if statement. And notice it's nested, it's underneath this other if. Python's getting crazy, man, here we go. If, and now we're going to evaluate the evil status, if evil, status equals our double equals and we'll say the string yes then we'll put our colon if that evaluates to true then we're doing something <laughs> look at this we got two ifs if 
if, if. That's what's happening here. Now here's the power of nested ifs. First we're saying if the name is Ben, then do something. And when we nest that next if under that, we're saying also, hey, if his name is Ben and he's evil, if the evil status is yes, then do something if both of those things are true. Now remember, keep an eye on that spacing, the indentation. The reason we know this if statement is nested under that if is because it's indented under it. Now knowing how important spacing is, let me ask you a question. Will this print statement run if Ben is evil? The answer is yes, because right now that code is nested under the initial if statement and that all that's evaluating for is if your name is Ben. So regardless of your evil status, if your name is Ben, it's gonna run that code. So now we have to make sure that we only run the code if your name is Ben and you're evil. How do we do that? Well, with understanding how important spacing is in Python, again, I'm gonna mention that a lot, we need to nest that code underneath the second if statement. That way it'll only run if your name is Ben and you are indeed evil. So over here on our if statement, or I mean our print statement right here, just gonna backspace that. Then I'm gonna tab it over to be nested right there. And also for the exit as well, it's gonna tab that underneath. So now, now, it's gonna work. So at this point, this code right here will only run if their name is Ben and Ben is evil. If his name is just Ben, it'll move on right along. Let's try it out real quick. Let's go ahead and run our code. Run, what's your name? We are still evil Ben today. Evil Ben or just Ben. Are you evil? Let's say yes. Ah, we're not welcome here. Let's try it again. Click on run. This time we won't be evil. We st we'll still be Ben, but we'll be one of those rare Bens that aren't evil. Are you evil? No. Now cool, something just happened there. <laughs> <laughs> First, we didn't get kicked out, but we also didn't get a nice like friendly greeting like the robot barista's programmed to do. We didn't get this. Why? Do you know? This else statement will only run if that isn't true because it's in line with this if statement. Again, spacing and indentation is so important in Python. It might be one of your bigger headaches, but once you learn it and get used to it, it'll be your best friend. So that else is tied to this if statement based on the spacing. So if your name is Ben, cool, we're gonna run everything under here. If your name isn't Ben, we're gonna run this. So now we need to add some code to make Ben feel a little special, cause hey, non-evil Bens are pretty special. So let's, let's do something real quick. Actually, let's see if you can do it. How can we make Ben feel special? How can we make the non-evil Bens feel welcome? So do something similar here. I don't care what you write, but make Ben feel good. Pause the video and try. Unpause, let's try it out real quick. Here's what I'm gonna try. Just like we can nest our ifs, we can also nest our else's. So here we go. Woo Python gets crazy. I'm gonna put my cursor right over here next to my exit, hit enter, and then I'll do a shift tab to back out to where I'm in line with that nested if. And here is where I'll type in my else. Else, colon, hit enter, and here is where I'll make Ben feel welcome. Print, oh. So you're one of those good bins. Come on in. So bam, just right here. Whoo! We've got an entire if else statement thing going on that's nested inside this if statement. And all of this code right here will only run if their name is Ben. Now enough talking about it. Let's run our code. I'm so excited. Coffee break. Whew. Click on run and we'll be Ben this time. Run. What's your name? I'm still Ben. Am I evil? Let's say no. No, I'm good Ben today. It worked. So you're one of those good Bens. Come on in. Let's be evil again. Let's make sure our code works. Test it thoroughly. What's your name? My name is Ben. Are you evil? Yes. I got kicked out. Oh my gosh. And let's test it one more time. Let's make sure that um, Brittany can still come in. Brittany. Okay, and she just comes on through because her name's not Ben. Obviously she's okay. Now, isn't that just awesome? <laughs> and let me tell you, you can do a ton of ifs. <laughs> let's check it out. I can do if two is less than three then do something. I can even nest an if under that nested if. So <laughs> if one is greater than four, then do something. I could continually nest as many ifs as my heart desires and go crazy. Now you shouldn't do that because that's insane, <laughs> but try it real quick. See how many ifs you can nest, how many things you can test out, go insane. The cool part is that that works, but it gets messy and confusing and you would never want to do that. Also keeping in mind that at the very bottom of your if craziness on the last little if statement, it's saying if this is true and this is true and this is true, then this will happen. All of those have to be true. And that's where nested ifs really come in handy is if you wanna make sure that multiple things are true at the same time. But now there's something else that's even more powerful, uh, probably equally powerful, it's all awesome. And it's gonna help us with our menu. You see right now, Robot Barista, he's doing a good job. And tell you what, go ahead and open up the second lab for this episode, episode five, and we'll get going here. In episode four and in the bonus lab we had after it, we made some changes to our menu. 
we took a big leap and we added frappuccinos to our menu. So we added it here. And the big kicker was that frappuccinos cost more money. They're just more expensive to make. So as it was, we charged $8 for whatever someone ordered. So black coffee, latte, cappuccino, all eight bucks. Frappuccinos cost us more, so we had to charge more for it. So we had to find a way to make our price be different if they ordered a frappuccino. We did that with a beautiful, just a beautiful mwah, chef's kiss if statement. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, and we did that right down here. We said, hey, if the customer orders a frappuccino, dude, that price is going to be $13 because that's, that's some bougie stuff. Else, if it's regular stuff like we have on the menu, eight bucks. But now we have a new problem. You see customers complaining that our prices should not be the same for all coffees. Black coffee by itself should be less than $8. So should an espresso. A latte should be a bit more and a cappuccino should be a bit more. We need to make sure that our menu items have different prices. Now this will be a fun one and I'm going to introduce a new concept. But before I do that, I want you to try this with just if statements. It is possible and it's going to be a bit messy, but I want you to try it. Pause the video, get the logic behind it and go. All right, unpause. Now here's how you would do it the messy way. We could simply make a bunch of these, a bunch of these if statements like this, watch. Just take that, copy it, paste that here and say instead of Frappuccino, it's gonna be black coffee and we'll make that price $3. That sounds reasonable, right? You would get some black coffee for three bucks? Yeah, come on down and we'll do it again. Espresso, latte, and then cappuccino. And tell you what, let's go ahead and remove our else's cause this will mess things up. So remove each else. And also think about why that would mess things up. I'll explain it here in a bit. So we get our if statements. Then down here at the bottom of this, I'm going to print the price so we can see what it evaluates to. Let's go ahead and run our code and let's order some, oh, let's order a latte. Let's take eight lattes. Cool, so it printed nine, is that true? Yes, it totally worked. So that's one way to do it. We can have it go, hey, is it a frappuccino? Set the price to this. Then it'll keep going in order. Is it black coffee? If it's not, it'll just skip it. If it is, oh cool, set the price to this. Now notice these are not nested if statements. If we had tried that, well then that totally would not have worked because if we did a nested statement under like the first one and we said if order equals black coffee, well then whatever code runs here, it would only run if the order was black coffee and a frappuccino and that makes zero sense. Now also earlier, I told you that I'd explain this. Um, I had it to where the else statement was gonna set the price to $8. So let's say for example, over here in my latte, if I uh, add the else statement back in there, price equals eight. Let's run the code and let's see I wanted a frappuccino. Well, <laughs> that's interesting. The price is eight when it should be 13 because you know, what happened? Well, it came in and said, oh yeah, dude, it's totally a frappuccino. We're gonna set the price to 13. And then it goes through and evaluates each if statement, and when it got down here, it goes, is it a latte? No. Well, else, we're gonna set it to eight. <laughs> so that totally wouldn't work. Now, a different way to do this, a better way. There's a new concept, it's so cool. We've got if, and we got else. So if that's true, cool, else, do something else. But now we also have else if. <laughs> Legit, it's a, it's a thing, else if. Or short, it's elif. <laughs> it sounds like I'm making up words, right? But it's real and it's true and check it out, it's awesome. So instead of doing a kajillion individual if statements, let's try elif. So I'm gonna step back here and delete all the stuff up to Frappuccino. So if order equals Frappuccino, set the price to 13. Just under that, I'm gonna hit enter. And then spacing, keep that in mind, spacing's important. Shift tab, where I'm equal with if, I'm gonna type in elif. <laughs> and then just after elif, I'll say order, equals black coffee, colon, price equals three. Now what just happened here is so powerful. So first we're saying, hey, does the order equal Frappuccino? If it does, cool, make the price 13 bucks. Then it's like else, but hold on, if, else if it equals black coffee, well then, hey, let's go ahead and set it to $3. So in this case, in this example, we're not nesting anything, because keep in mind, it's the spacing's important. It's on equal footing with the uh, if. It's kind of like a variation on else, except we're evaluating something else. That's confusing, I know. And we're not saying that the order has to both equal frappuccino and black coffee. We're saying, hey, if it's frappuccino, cool, do this. If not, hey, is it black coffee? Cool, do this. <laughs> and we can keep going. Let's try it out. Let's add another elif, because you can do that. Hit enter after price. We'll step back to be equal with elif again. Elif, order, equals espresso. We'll draw our colon, enter, and keeping our spacing in mind, we'll do price equals, what did we say before? Was it five? I think it was five dollars. And tell you what, go ahead right now, without watching me, go ahead and fill in the rest. Pause the video. Now unpause, I'll do mine real quick. So now, we've got all our ifs going on, and then we got our elifs. Let's run the code, let's see what happens. <laughs> run. I would like a, let's get a latte. I'll have 10 lattes. It worked! Notice the last number there is our price. We're printing the price down here. That's the last thing our code runs and it matches that number. The logic is working. We're controlling the flow. Don't you feel powerful right now? Take a coffee break. 
Now also just for fun, let's at the very end of this entire parade here. Isn't this much cleaner than a bunch of if statements? I think it is anyway. At the end of this, let's do our else. And we'll do print, sorry, we don't have that here because we've included all the things they could order. If they say anything else, we'll just say, no, <laughs> we don't have that. Let's try it. Let's run the code. Run. I would like a green tea. Oh, come on. Where are you at here? And this logic is kind of faulty, but I'll just put an eight. Oh, you know what? We made a mistake. I hope this, I love when, when things like this happen when I'm teaching, because it's like, well, first of all, I'm not perfect, far from it, but it gives you a chance to learn. Like, what do we do here? What's the problem? Well, first I noticed the big glaring problem. <laughs> I did a lift price down here like an idiot. That should be what? It should be order fixed, no harm done. But that's not the main problem. If I run the code again, I'll say again, green tea. Uh, we still have a problem and it tells us right here in the error. Name error, price is not defined. We're trying to print the price down here, but it's not there. So what I can do, I could either just comment print price so it doesn't try to run that code, or I can just end this else statement, say price equals zero. That way we don't have a problem anymore. So let's run the code. Green tea, I'll take nine of them. And it says, sorry, we don't have that here. So in that cool, we have our, if your order's this, do this. Else if, else if, I fucking going crazy, else if, and then finally, else, we don't have that. What are you even doing here? This is a coffee shop. Now that's it for the new concepts, but I do have a challenge lab for you if you wanna try it out. The link for that and the walkthrough will be in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. So here's the challenge I want you to do. This will be a fun one. If they order a latte and they want extra whipped cream, this is pretty much latte, do you want whipped cream? Which of course they're going to want whipped cream. If the answer is yes, make the price $11. If no, well, keep it at the standard price nine bucks. This particular problem will combine everything you've learned in this video and previous stuff. So again, check that link below and see what you got. All right, that's it for Python Right Now, episode five. Coffee break. I told you, I told you, I warned you, Python gets crazy awesome. And again, it's going to get even more crazier and awesomer. So buckle your seatbelts, make sure you have coffee on hand. And also, have you hacked the YouTube algorithm today? Let's make sure you do. Hit the like button, subscribe, comment, notification bell, all those things, because you have to hack YouTube today. Ethically, of course. And also a massive shout out to the sponsor of this entire series, IT Pro TV. Again, if you wanna get started in IT or you wanna further your career in IT, if you finally wanna get that CCNA or that A+, or that CCMP or your AWS certifications, whatever you wanna do, right now is always the time. And check them out, link below. Use code NETWORKCHUCK and get 30% off forever. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll catch you guys next time.